Recently, I've been using synthesized speech to edit rough drafts of tutorial videos and realized it would be useful in application localization workflows as well, where strings are often sent out for translation using a spreadsheet. What I'll do is to get the strings directly from a Google Sheet, send them to the text-to-speech API, and then put the resulting MP3s into Google Drive for easy retrieval. Since text-to-speech calls incur a cost, I'll track changes to my strings and only resynthesize the speech when there's been an update. I can definitely see an end-to-end -end example being useful for generating placeholder audio in games, and in certain applications, the audio generated by the DeepMind WaveNet ML model may be good enough to ship to production. I've been coding a lot in Golang lately, so I'll base everything on the provided quick start examples in the documentation. Okay, before I get started with coding, I'll make a GCP project and enable the Sheets, Drive, and Text-to-Speech APIs. Calls to Sheets and Drive require an OAuth client ID and I'll need to configure an OAuth content screen that gets shown to users when they're authorizing access. I'll add the necessary scopes here. The first is drive file, which lets it read and write files created by the app itself. Next is spreadsheets scope, as it'll be reading and writing to sheets. I'll add my account as a test user of the app and confirm everything. This looks good. I can download the credentials as a file by clicking the arrow. Text-to-speech API calls require service account credentials, so let me generate one. I'll download this key to a local JSON file as well. So now I have two credentials, one for Sheets and Drive and one for text-to-speech. Okay, first things first. I'm going to be demonstrating Japanese, so I need a spreadsheet to read Japanese strings from. Let me quickly make a new sheet and add a few sample strings. That looks good. All right, to retrieve those strings, I'll start by modifying the Golang Sheets quick start example. Let's see, I already renamed the file containing my OAuth client ID. First, I'll initialize my Golang dependency management and download the packages Google provides to handle OAuth and calling the Sheets API. All right, let me copy and paste in the quick start code, and then we'll have a look at which parts of this file I want to modify. Okay, let me jump down to the main program. Looks like the first part of this is setting up authorization and authentication. Here, near the middle of the main function, it accesses the sheet. Let me get the URI for the new sheet I created and paste it in a comment for reference. The spreadsheet ID is this long string near the end of the URI, so I'll put it in an appropriate variable. The default name for a new spreadsheet is sheet1, and I started my strings in cell A1 and they continue for the entire column A. Scrolling down, it looks like the example prints the retrieved data to the screen, so I can modify this just a little bit to print my Japanese strings. All right. Ready to run this. First, it'll ask me to do the OAuth dance. This will probably look familiar if you programmed against Google APIs before. All right, paste this back to the terminal and there are the strings for my spreadsheet. Okay, let me move this modified quick start to an internal packages directory for later. And I'll move on to the text-to-speech API. First, I'll download the Google supplied Golang packages for this API and confirm that I have the Google Cloud service account credentials I created earlier. All right, let me copy and paste in the quick start code, and then we'll have a look at which parts of this file I want to modify. Jumping a few lines into the main function, here's where the parameters for this text-to-speech synthesize request are specified. In my case, I want to synthesize Japanese using the high-quality WaveNet model. For the first crack at this, I'm going to specify a Japanese Hello World message, and we'll make sure everything works before getting more complicated. Running it produces a file that's encouraging. Now I'll have a crack at the Drive API. You've seen this twice already, so I'll fast forward through downloading the Google provided Drive package and making a local copy of the Drive Quick Start file. Okay, this Quick Start looks pretty similar to the one for Sheets. Let's see what we need to customize. First, I know I'll be using buffered I.O. to read the synthesized speech MP3 file, so I'll add that. Now I'll update the requested scope to Drive file, as I mentioned when we were creating credentials. All right, at the bottom of the main function, this quick start is just doing a directory listing of the drive root. This is where I'll change the code and instead read the text-to-speech mp3 file from the local disk, then write it to drive. I'll speed up the OAuth dance again, and you can see that it completed without errors. Hopping over to drive, I now have an mp3 file. Let me play that to confirm. Hello world. Yep, that's my Japanese hello world. A few moments later. All right, I've cleaned things up a bit. You can grab this refactor from the GitHub repo in the description. 
I moved the modified Sheets and Drive Quick Starts to their own internal packages and factored out the Google API authentication from them since the code was nearly identical in both. I also took a minute to add the ability to write to a column in Sheets as well. I'll show you why shortly. First, let me do a sample run of the final script. All right, it initialized the authentication, read the spreadsheet, wrote four audio files with semi-gibberish names, and then did something with checksums. Before we look at the code, let me verify the output files in Drive. その demo は面白い方法です。このクラウドがいい。純粋。簡単。Okay, there are the four lines I put in the sheet synthesized this speech. Let's have a closer look. I threw together a rudimentary command line interface at the top of the program here so you can try it out without having to modify a lot of code. So have a look here if you want to run this yourself. Okay, let's have a look at the main program. One feature I mentioned at the start of the video was detecting changes and limiting my text to speech API calls to only when I have new or updated strings. I'm accomplishing this with a simple CRC checksum of the string. Any changes result in a different checksum, signaling to the script to synthesize speech of the new string. Near the end of the script, I write the checksums back out to the sheet in an empty column. I read them at the beginning of the program. This is a pretty simplistic change detection mechanism, but sufficient for what I'm doing here. I'm naming the output mp3 files after the checksum of the string that they contain, thus the semi-gibberish names, because that works really well on my build process, but you could easily name them after the strings instead, which is a couple of code tweaks. Let me jump over to the sheet and scroll to the right. Uh, here you can see the checksums were written in an unused column by the last run. I'll quickly add another string to synthesize, and we can go back and verify the script only performs one more text-to-speech API call. Okay, it's skipping the first four lines, and it put one new mp3 file in Drive. I'll hop back over to Sheets and verify. Yep, this line now has a checksum, and in Drive. Checksum no test desu. Yes, that is speech of the text I just entered. So now we have a working end-to-end -end flow from text strings in a Google Sheet to mp3 files using WaveNet in Google Drive. I hope this sparked your imagination of how you can use Google Cloud ML together with Google Workspace. If you enjoy this kind of hands-on content, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. If you have any questions, please share them in the comments and we'll do our best to help you out. Otsukare sama deshita.